Hey, what's up, users? This is John at Mies for You here to help you build awesome websites without code. And I'm really excited about doing today's video tutorial. I'm going to be talking about the browser border widget uh, that allows you to add a border around your entire Adobe Muse website. Uh, now, this widget is really customizable, and actually, when I first released it, I just made it so that you could change the border color that so that it would be a solid border color around the website. Uh, and then I realized, you know, what if you could add images or a gradient to the border? That would be kind of interesting. Uh, so I, I went ahead and did that. So it is it is the 1.1 version. So I went ahead and updated it. So you can now add images and gradients to the border as well. And I have a few examples here. Uh, so here we have the border. Uh, this is a solid border and it's white. So it's around the website. And if I scroll, we can see the website stays within the border here. Uh, then I have another example, the gradient border, and this is a gradient around the entire website. Um, so it's actually four individual gradients. Um, there's one on the left, at the top, the right, and the bottom. So I've just changed the colors of the gradient so that it looks like um, it's seamlessly going around the website. And it has an interesting effect because the page here um, it has a gradient as well, has the same gradient but inversed, it's kind of like reversed. Um, so it's the same gradient, but they're kind of opposite. So it looks like the gradient is almost animating, like changing color as you're scrolling through the website, which is really a really interesting effect there. Uh, and then we have the image border. Uh, this was a lot of fun. So these two images on, on the right, they're the, they're the same person, um, but I've just repositioned the image on each side. So on the left side, we have the left side of his face. On the right side, we have the right side of his face. And we you can also remove the bottom and top border and just have left and right borders or you know just the borders that you'd like. Um, so that's why I was really excited uh, with this widget because the design possibilities are just really endless and you can get really creative with adding different borders and changing kind of like the layout or how your website looks. I think it has a lot of design capabilities within it. Um, so this is the image border and I can scroll through the website just like that and if i resize the browser you can set the the border in pixels or percentage um, so that the border changes width as you're resizing the browser if you wanted a fixed border you would use pixels if you wanted kind of a fluid uh, border that changes size with the browser you would use percentages and then we have another one with an image as well the same effect just kind of different colors there and if we scroll we have the website as well. Uh, so in this video tutorial, I'm gonna showcase how to use the widget and where to access it. So to access the widget, you simply go to museforyoushop.com and here you can click on the pop-up and here you can click subscribe to get access to all widgets and any new widgets I come out with for 39 a year. Or if you'd like to subscribe with PayPal, you can click here and subscribe with PayPal. The browser border widget is right here and here you can click add to cart to purchase individually or again you can get access to all widgets and any new widgets I come out with for 39 a year. Here are the features included, the widget options, I'll be adding a few more widget options here because there's, there's actually more than this here. Um, here's the preview page I just went over and you can use the menu to go to the different, um, the different examples there and I'll go back to shop. And then here, uh, once this video is done, it'll be below the preview page. And here's the community section if you had any questions about the widget. Uh, so I'll go ahead and jump right into Adobe Muse. Um, here I have a blank site. And to create a blank site, you could just go to File, New Site uh, to create a blank site there. And here I'll go to my library panel right here. I'll just open that. Um, if you don't see the library panel, you can go to Window and click on Library. And here I'm gonna type in browser border. All right, so when you first install the widget, it comes in a zip file, so you just unzip the zip file and double click the .mulib file. And then you'll get these four widgets here uh, in the library panel. So we have browser border all sides with gradient. All sides means that um, you can apply either a, a color, um, an image, or a gradient uh, to all sides. They'll be the same for all the sides. So one will be the same for left, top, right, and bottom. And then you have individual sides. And this allows you to individually add a color, a gradient, or an image to each side, to the left, top, right, and bottom. And that'll make more sense as I'm going through the video tutorial. Uh, so the first widget we'll work with is browser border all sides 
with image. So I'll just click, hold and drag and place onto my Adobe Muse website. And actually, before I get into the widget options, let me add some content to the website so we can kind of scroll the website a bit. So I'm just gonna go to lipsum.com to get some kind of placeholder text for the website. So this should do here. And I'll just copy that and paste. And we'll just place some text in here. Let me zoom out a little bit. I'm not gonna add any breakpoints for this example. Uh, well, for now, but maybe in a bit, I'll add some breakpoints to showcase, showcase it with breakpoints. And bam. And I'll just style this text a little bit. Maybe make it uh, 16, or 14's good, we'll leave it at 14. And add some spacing there. So there we have some text and I'll bring the font smoother just to make that font look nice. Okay, now back to the widget. All right, I just wanted to add, add some content there so we had some, uh, some content and we can scroll through the site. All right, so I've added some content. So let me, let me go into the browser border widget. So here are the widget options. So we have instance number um, and let me minimize this here in the background or close this. Uh, so we have we have instance number. Um, so this allows you to, to add uh, different different types of browser borders on different breakpoints. So what you would do if you wanted a, let's say a, a browser border for your largest breakpoint at let's say 1400 or 1200, and you wanted a different one for maybe tablet or mobile, you could simply um, add another browser border to that breakpoint and then change the instance number and they'd have unique uh, browser borders on those breakpoints. Um, and I'll showcase that as well. Um, so here we have the border width. So right now it's set to 15 and right away we have uh, a browser border. So we have this dark blue browser border around the website. Um, so you can set this in pixels or percentage. So if I were to go ahead here in the pixels or percentage option, if I were to say percentage and let me zoom out here and I'll preview it is 15% of the browser width. So I have 15% on the right and 15% on the left. So we're using 30% of the browser width. Um, and the same for the bottom and the top, it's using 15% of the top and the bottom. So it's using, yeah, 30% of the browser height there for the, the bottom and the top. So percentages works a little bit differently. And with percentage, it becomes responsive. It actually changes size as the browser width or the browser height changes. And one thing you might be noticing is that the text is over the border. And that is because the browser border widget needs to be in the first layer in the layers panel. So here I'm just going to grab the browser border, which is the last here on the in the layers panel, I'm just gonna click, hold and drag and place it to the top. And now that text will be within the border. So this is another creative thing you could do. You could have, you could actually have text here at the top and the website within the browser border to make a really kind of interesting design with text over the border and the website within the border. Um, and that can be really fun as well. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and change it back to pixels because 15% is a little bit large for the border okay so there we have the 15 pixels and if i resize because it's in pixels it's not going to change uh size for the border it's just going to stay 15 pixels all the time all right so let me go back in and if you don't add an image the border color will be used so i can change the color and that color will be used for the browser border. Um, that is if an image is not added and I can change the border width. Let me change it to 25 and make it a little bit larger to see that better. So there we have the browser border. Um, if you don't add an image and I've actually added this within the widget options, uh, if no image is selected for the border, the border color will be used instead. But if I do want an image, I can click on add file and I can go to yet yeah, my images folder here and I'll double click on this image and here I've added an image. So the border color will no longer be used, but let me showcase with the image. So there we have the image. Now, because it's on all sides, that image is placed on all sides of the browser border. Um, and it's positioned, um, 
let's see if I can explain this correctly. So it's positioned 50% and 50%. So we have the image position option. Uh, so think of a graph and actually let me let me grab a graph real quick and showcase this. Okay, so here I have kind of a representation of let's say the coordinates. Um, so we have the Y axis, which is vertical and the X axis and the image image position is at 50%, 50%, which is the center of the image. If I were to say zero, zero, it would be zero on the X axis and zero on the Y axis. So that would be the top left of the image. If I were to say 50 on the Y axis and zero, no, 50 on the X axis and zero on the Y axis, that would be the top. Um, if I were to say uh, 100 on the X axis and zero on the Y axis, that would be the top right. Um, if I were to say zero on the X axis and 50 on the Y axis, that would be the left. 50-50 um, is the center. If I were to say 100 on the, y, on the X axis and 50 on the Y axis, that would be the right center of the, of the image. If I were to say uh, 100 on the X and 100 on the Y, that would be the bottom right. If I were to say 50 on the X and 100 on the Y, that would be the bottom center. If I were to say zero on the X and 100 on the Y, that would be the bottom left. So you can actually position where you want the image to show up within percentages, uh, which is, is a kind of a lot of fun there and it's really customizable so that you know if you have your image and you want a, a certain part of the image to appear within the border, you just have to play with the X and Y position uh, in within the widget. So here within the image position X, it's in percentage and the image position Y, it's in percentage as well. And you can scale to fill to fill the entire, uh, the entire border or you can say scale to fit. So again, let's see how that looks. Let me zoom out here. Uh, let's see how that looks within the website. Okay, so there we have it. Uh, that image is 50 uh, is right in the center uh, within the border there. So let me make the border a little bit larger. Uh, let's say 50 pixels and we'll see more of the image. All right, so there's that image there. So let's play around with the position. Let's say I want the image to start in the upper left. I'll just say zero, zero, zero there for the uh, X and Y position. And as we see, it's all black because the upper left of the image is all black there. Um, so yeah, let me try something else. Maybe, maybe 70, 70. That might just be its beard maybe. Or yeah, kind of the, we got his ear and the mouth here it looks kind of strange. Um, so let me just go back to 50, 50. All right, so now I'll work with the opacity. So the opacity is set to one, which is fully visible. So here I'll set it to 0.5 and that image will be a bit see-through. And then the the background of the website will be a bit visible, visible so it'll be uh, clear white in the back there. So we see we have an opacity there and because th these borders are overlapping, it's a little bit darker in the corners there. And we can see the text coming up there as well. So that's another interesting effect. So the text is kind of visible and then once it gets into the site, it's fully visible here. All right, so hopefully that all made sense. I know I'm moving kind of quickly uh, here, but there's a lot of information I wanna cover in this tutorial. Um, so there we have it. Uh, you can also say scale to fit. Uh, not sure if this would be super useful unless you were adding icons maybe, but as we can see, we have uh, the image is, fit, is fitting within the border there. So they're a bit small. I mean, you could do something really creative with this. Like for instance, if I were to add an icon, um, let me see if I can find an icon here. Okay, so let's say I were to add an icon here and we'll set it in percentage so it's a little bit bigger and we'll say 10%. So now because it's fitting within the border, we're gonna have an icon on each side of the website. Kind of interesting. And I can set it to fixed so that each side is the same. Yeah, so I'll set it in pixels so it's um, each side is the same size. All right, and I'd want that a lot larger. So I'd say maybe 100 pixels for each. All right, there we go. So we have that, that icon on each side of the browser. Cool. So yeah, you can get really creative with this widget and just kind of 
place things as a border around the website. All right, so if you have any questions about that, I moved fairly quickly because there's three other widgets that I wanna cover uh, in this tutorial as well. Um, and actually, before I get into the other ones, I'll cover this now. Um, if you wanna hide the border on a specific breakpoint, so I'll right click in the breakpoints bar, I'll add a breakpoint, I'll say 600, and for this breakpoint, I'll just right click and hide in breakpoint. And actually the text wasn't responsive, so let me make the text responsive. Resize, I'll say responsive width. And I'll set that there, and then I'll hide it in this breakpoint. And I'll actually change it to a color border there. I just deleted the image, so now it's a color. And there we have it. So here we're on the larger breakpoint, and once we get to the 600 breakpoint, that border disappears. So if you don't want a border for mobile, you could just uh, hide it in that breakpoint. Or if you wanted a completely new border, uh, you could just add a new browser border on this breakpoint and change the instance number here. So here I'll just change it to a different color, maybe green. And then I want to right click on this widget because now it's on the 960 breakpoint here. I want to right click on the 600 breakpoint, right click, hide, nope, right click, hide in other breakpoints. All right, and then I'll preview. And so there we go. There we have this border and now we have this border. All right, and I'm gonna add some opacity here. We'll see opacity of one there. All right, hopefully you're still following along. I know I'm moving kind of quickly. So there we have two different browser borders on different breakpoints. All right, looks good. On to the next, okay. All right, so I'm gonna delete all of these actually here and I'll delete this breakpoint. We're not gonna work with it for now. Um, so now I'm gonna bring in the browser border all sides with gradient. So I'm gonna click, hold and drag and place onto my Adobe Muse website. So this is a lot of fun here. Um, so there we have the border width, we can set it in pixels or percentage, we can set the gradient angle, so how the gradient kind of uh, shifts between the two colors, and we can set the first color, the location, the uh, and the opacity, and the second color, location, and the opacity. So right away, if I preview in the browser, we have this gradient. Uh, this is really interesting. You're going to notice that certain colors overlap and you can see that it's not a completely cohesive kind of gradient around the entire border. This I'm going to cover this with the individual sides because you actually need to work with individual sides to get a cohesive gradient around the entire website. Um, so for the gradient, I'll just change some of the colors and let me add some colors from my CC libraries. And hopefully you're still here because <laughs> I'm kind of go, going over a lot. But uh, let's uh, kind of change the colors here. And I'll say yellow here. So you, get, you can pick two gradient colors and kind of work with the angle and everything. So now I have different gradients there. Again, I can set it in percentage. So if I were to say percentage, I'll make it 10% so it's not so huge. And I'll preview. And now that's really big. So there we have the gradient there as well, the website in the middle. So the way the gradient works, it's kind of similar to the Illustrator, Adobe Illustrator gradients, because we have location and we have angle. So I just want to go into Illustrator just to showcase this a bit. Okay, so here I'm in Illustrator, so I'm going to create a rectangle. And let me take off the stroke. And I'm going to go into the gradients panel right in here. Just open that and I'm going to apply gradient and for the type I'm going to say linear and here you can set an angle. So if I set it 120 we can see that gradient changes and let me add some different colors here actually. So I'll go back to my libraries and right click add to swatches, click here, go back into gradients and I'll select the two gradients here. Okay. So we can see we can change the angle of the gradient within the angle section. So that's the same, that transfers into the widget. So in the angle section, you can change the angle of the gradient. Um, and then you can change the opacity as well and the location. 
So for this first color, I can change the location to 40, and we can see it covers more of the gradient there, and it actually moves here. It's like moving this bar here. That's the location. So this one's set to zero, and this one's set to 100. So in the widget options, um, we go here, we can see that the location for, for the first one is zero, and the location for the second one is 100. So if you want a visual reference, you can actually use Adobe Illustrator and see how the gradient looks, and then just apply those settings to the widget and you'll get the same gradient um, there. So there we go. That's for the gradient. Um, and that's basically it. Um, you can yeah change the angle and percentage of pixels, instance number, the same thing. And I'll preview again. And there we have the, the uh, gradient there. So we have the top, the left, top, right, and bottom. Okay, so let me go ahead and showcase the individual sides because this will this will make a bit more sense if we start using individual sides so I'll bring in the browser border individual sides with gradients so I'll click hold and drag and place onto my Adobe Muse website so individual sides allows you to to change the left top right and bottom border so we have left border right border top border and bottom border now all the settings that I just went over in the first one with the gradients is applied here. Are, here are all the options, but now we have them for each border. So for color one and color two, we have blue to green. And then if we go to the right border, we have green to blue. Top border, we have blue to green. Bottom border, green to blue. Now you notice they're kind of inverse, the colors there. And that's so that they blend into each other as they're going around the browser the the around the web page so let me preview again and as we can see we have a really cohesive uh, border around the website so the great it looks like just a one gradient is going around the site and you can change the angle uh, for each uh, you can change individual uh, widths and heights for each side so I can say 30 for the left and right this might change the the fluidness of the of the um, the gradient, but let's check it out. Still looks good. Yep. So we have 30 pixels on the right, 30 pixels on the left, and 15 pixels on the top, and 15 pixels on the bottom. All right, so I, you can play with that, and maybe I'll change it to 15. Yeah, I'll do 15. Um, actually, to showcase a bit better, I'm going to do 50 for all. So they're a bit bigger and I'll work with the colors as well. So let me just change the colors. So I'm going to say pink to yellow and for the right border, I'm going to do the same thing, um, pink to yellow. Okay. And then for the top border, I'm going to say zero and for the bottom border, I'm going to say zero. So now we're just going to have two borders on the left and the right, just like that. All right. And if I wanted to, this is going to look a bit weird, but I'm going to go ahead and do it. Um, I'm going to go to browser fill. I'm going to add a gradient to the browser fill. I'm going to add a vertical gradient and I'm going to say yellow to pink. And you're going to notice something interesting happen here. So as I'm scrolling, the border and the website are kind of inverse and it has kind of an interesting effect there. All right, so I'm not gonna spend too much time with gradients, you can do a lot. This is probably wasn't the best example for it, but I wanted to showcase how it relates to Adobe Illustrator and how customizable all the gradients are within the individual sides. So you can really, you know, customize all the sides and just have them look, you know, how, however you'd like there. So there we go. Yeah, so we have different gradients on different sides. I'm gonna go ahead and take the the browser fill off here. Just say not or white here. And I'll preview. And there we go. So again, you can have a lot of really interesting colors on your website. All right, so the last one I'm gonna go over is the browser border individual sides with images. And this one is a lot of fun. This one is actually, um, I'm going to go over how I created the, the example with the guy uh, in the black 
the guy with the beard and his face on two sides. So we go to the preview page here. So we're gonna recreate this one here. Nope, that's the kid. Yep, this one here of kind of his face on both sides. So let me go into Adobe Muse and I'll close Illustrator back here. Um, so we, here we have individual sides with images. So I don't want a border for the top and I don't want a border for the bottom. I want the left border and the right border to be in pixel in percentages so they're responsive. So when the browser changes size, the, the image changes sides on the left and the right as well. And I'll go ahead and add the image. So we have this image here and this image here. So I'll preview in the browser. And here we have the same image on the left and the right. Um, looks interesting, but what I want for this effect is just his left side on this side and just the right side on this side. So I'm gonna play with the image position. So for this image, I want the image to move to the left. So I'm gonna give it less um, X, less of an X value. So I'm gonna say like 30 here for the X value. So let's see how that looks. So I set 30% for X and yeah, that works well. So I wanna move it maybe a little bit to the right. So I'm gonna say maybe 30, 36, I think it was, yeah, 36. So now it's moved more to the right and it's in the center still. So let's preview that. And that looks perfect, great. So it just takes a little bit of playing around with to get used to the percentages and moving the image around. But once you get it, it's a lot of fun. You can really kind of move the image exactly where you'd like. So for this image, I wanna move him to the right a bit. So we see more of the right of his face there. So let's go to the widget options. I'll go to the right border and I'll say something like 70. And let's see how that looks. So 70% on the x-axis. Uh, that was a bit too much, so let's go back into the widget and we'll say 60. All right, that's almost perfect. I might say something like 57, just to get a little bit more of his nose there. And be 59. Reporter 59%. Yep, that looks pretty good. I probably do 58. Kind of a bit of perfectionist here, so let me do 58. So let me preview that again. And perfect. So there we have the right side of his face and the left side of his face. And if we resize the browser because it's in percentages, the uh, the image will stay will will change size for the different sizes uh, for the different browser widths there. So you just have to position the text and the elements uh, correctly within the website so they're not being cut off. Or you could create another breakpoint. Let's see, six hundred. Let me create a small breakpoint there. I think this should should work. Yeah, so you just want to kind of position the text and the elements more in the center of the website so it doesn't so it doesn't get cut off on the left and the right there. All right, so let me make the browser fill uh, black and make the text white. To have that nice effect there. Looks good. Yeah. So let me work with this text because I do want it to be, let me make sure it's responsive. It is, let me see if I stretch to browser width. I just want to work with the, uh, yeah, no. So I just formatted the text a bit so that it doesn't kind of run into the, the border there. So you just want to make be aware of that uh, when working with the borders that the content and the borders work well together. There we go. And I could add a, another breakpoint here. 480 and just make the text even a bit thinner. All right, looks good. Perfect. 
So there we have it, the browser border widget. Um, I know I covered quite a bit of information fairly quickly. I did want to go over all the widgets there. So if we go back into Adobe Muse right in here, and again, if you wanted to hide the, the border on a specific breakpoint, you could right click and hide in breakpoint and and it would be hidden for that particular breakpoint. So there we go, it's hidden, and there it's back. All right, so you can play with that and kind of get really creative with the different browser borders. Okay, so that's it for the browser border widget. Um, again, you can do all sides at once, or you can do individual individual sides within the widget options. We have all sides with gradient, all sides with image, individual sides with gradients, and individual sides with images. Uh, so that's it for this video tutorial. If you have any questions, uh, you can leave them in the comment section below or in the community section on the widget page. Um, so to get access to this widget, you simply go to museforyoushop.com and here you can click on the pop-up and here you can click subscribe to get access to all widgets and any new widgets I come out with for $39 a year. Or if you'd like to subscribe with PayPal, you can click here and subscribe with PayPal. The browser border widget is right here and here you can click add to cart to purchase individually or again you can get access to all widgets and any new widgets I come out with for $39 a year. Here are the features included. I'll be adding a few more widget options here. And here's the preview page. You can go through the different examples here. And yep, I'll go back here. Um, yeah, features included. And this video will be right below the preview page once it's done. Here's the community section if you had any questions about the widget uh, there. So yeah, that's it for this video tutorial. Again, I do this to help you build awesome websites without code. Uh, if you like this video tutorial, you can subscribe below. Also in the show more section below are links to other resources and links to museforyoushop.com. So again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video tutorial. Thank you.